speaker is actually a storyteller. So he's a gazob, or let's say, Greek gazob illustrator. Uh, people who have been to uh, the last month MFA thesis, so KUR, who would have known her work. It's so proud moment for me to welcome her on the stage where she will share her journey from being an uninhibited art kid to this art professional who has made her own name in this industry with her unconventional and guts of art style. Let's welcome to the stage Mrigaza Bhagavatam. I am um, not Actually, okay. um, so yeah, much like from my childhood, I had always been like the art kid. So, if you like for my name, this would probably be the sort of works that you see. I mostly do like illustrations and designs and it's mostly like digital based and a sort of futuristic and robotic style because like I'm really into cyberpunk and stuff like that. So like where my art journey sort of began was like I used to really be into drawing. And like my family, my, my fufu and my mama are also into like the art profession and I really got inspired from them. And even though like my parents were not very enthusiastic about me <coughs> wanting to follow a, like an art career, I sort of made my own way in some ways. So these were like something I did as like a kid. And, and then like, even in like school, I used to be like the art kid in the corner drawing or like Kaseko art or Muksa Konpo in the corner. And so like SLC Pachi, when SLC and like plus two Pachi, when it came to which college I wanted to join, I didn't really want to join any other college. So when the art college in my view. So I joined like KU, KU Co Art Department BFA ma, and there it was sort of like uh learning experience, like learning, like learning stuff that I had not like explored. Like maybe let's say first my art one, good drawing matter but then uh but see, like art college got but see, it was more than drawing, it was like design and sculptures and everything. And these were some of the works I did when I was in college. I, I'm, yeah, college. Uh, yeah. And this was actually, I sort of graduated my bachelor's in the 2015 earthquake. And I, I, we had to finish our final, like final year group project right after the earthquake. And so I was like, I had a different comic in mind because like, I always wanted to have my own comic. But then the earthquake hit, so I was like, I'm going to make something out of the earthquake theme. And my whole thought process while doing this comic was like, earthquake So that was the whole concept behind it. So it's not like the main character sort of dies in the earthquake. And after college, I because my main thing was illustrations a lot, like children's book sort of, children's book publication sort of started approaching me, and I sort of started my career as a professional in publication and children's book children's book worker. And during those times, I used to do like small books, like the Batsarko book but then I. <coughs> I sort of, I sort of enjoyed some of the stories, but some stories I really didn't enjoy. So I started figuring out like this was probably not my thing. I like illustrations and comic books, but I don't think children's book was the direction for me. Ani, then I joined Satya. Ani Satya, Satya, uh, I got to explore my illustrations 
but in more of like merchandising and mural circle form na. And it was like Satya Ma got Jada Herina, I sort of got to like really explore different like murals aru and large form art aru. And also like Satya Ma was something um like made a merchant like merchandising go bare ma only detail ma how to like merchandise my stuff type day sort of sick with you. But then when I was in uh Satya I sort of started being like I want to explore more as a designer. So then I joined Pia and Image Arc, which is like, uh, Pia is a product design company and Image Arc is a design studio. But they're both sister companies, so it's like a second single company. And there I sort of went more into the more publication, printing, design, and layouts, school stuff, or and these were the sort of works I did, which was like pretty fun because it was just not design, it was more like uh book and also I got to do more like commercial store of work there. And also I got like more of a chance to do like branding design and design identity or one only chance part of here. And yeah, I also designed for like a, a designer. She is a fashion designer, and I got to design her stuff, which was fun. <laughs> but then after that, I sort of like, where am I as an illustrator? Anyway, my style sort of grew was. Uh, I still always have been an illustrator more than a designer, and I always have been wanting to do like comics and stuff comics and have my own comic and then sort of so I sort of started taking like jobs outside of office which would allow me to actually explore myself and these were these are some of the examples of the work comic work rules I had done I and mean, even like as a uh, illustrator and a digital artist say, before pilot day, I used to mostly do hand drawings and then sort of as I got my tablets and iPads, I sort of evolved into a digital artist. And yeah, these are also some of my work. Like, uh, yeah, some of more, some more of my work. <laughs> and so I really usually explore like, um, people in my work because I find people and faces very interesting. And here I was like trying to explore new styles and a architecture for me because sometimes the old houses are quite interesting here. And as I developed my own style, I also started freelancing in the same way with like middle style except for Nekamaru. But then yeah, so I right now I mostly just do freelance and I don't really align myself with any one single company because I get to explore really different sort of works and not just like stick to one style because I think I prefer I really prefer like changing styles and adapting myself. Mm, yeah. So but I mean if like as a freelancer you actually have to end up adapting because your Ramadan style some situation actually because different projects you have to adapt with different stuff. And yeah, these are some more of my works. And then I sort of went back to college to finish my master's and I uh I recently sort of finished I'm I'm at the end of my master's journey and I just submitted like my first draft of my thesis yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, this was my <coughs> master's school thesis project. It was more because I still want to be and want to continue as an illustrator and designer, but more in like have my own comic and tell stories. Um, 
this was my project. It was it's the project is like a web comic, so if you want, you can find it on Webtoon. It's called Vimoksh, and Vimoksh is more about uh, dystopian futures because I sort of think about it, dystopian futures a lot. Like, what would happen if Elon Musk took over the world, or like the corporate capitals took over the world? And those are sort of the thoughts I always have in my mind. And on the other side, I always also think, especially for me, I sometimes feel very detached with my culture and I really want to connect back to it. And for me, Vimoksha was sort of a way to do that where I'm like, um, I'm like corporate overloads are like comment from one minute and then also my, me exploring culture where the story is mostly about a dystopian future where the main character is living in 2180 and she sort of enjoys being in a virtual world which is mostly based in uh, like Amamit Saru and Nepal Gomit Saru, mostly Patanko because I am from Patan. And he, but then her real world is like a very dark, desolate world and she sort of has to overcome it. So yeah, right now I'm doing my own project and sort of, yeah, I'm here. <laughs>